I like to tell people I'm just that 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 guy that 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 really come in and, and dial in when it when it comes to coming from the bottom and up. Yeah, I'm really him. Like yeah. we get a lot of people who say they got that story, yeah, but it's really not. And just to keep it a hundred, I don't want to go all the way back, but I can, because I know it's a lot of people that struggle with that, but they yeah. don't have the strength, right? God, like he, yeah. for some reason, just always say, had me in another mindset, in another zone, you yeah. know, growing up. When they see me, a young black man, saying he owns the largest boating jet ski rental yeah. in DC, they want to do business with me. Bro, we forgot the most important, like I almost died two years ago. Wow. Damn, like I forgot all about, like wow, wow, two wow. years ago, I couldn't even walk. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. I have an exciting episode for you today with the rise in rental arbitrage on land. There is also one happening on the water. And so when I mean rental arbitrage, I'm talking Airbnb. I'm talking, you know, people who are using property to make multiple streams of income but the same thing is happening on water. So renting out boats and skis is one way for you to leverage a potential liability and turn it into an asset while providing an unforgettable experience for your clientele and make millions of dollars while doing it. We got from D.C., my guy, Shad the Boat Goat in the building. What up, brother? What's up, man? Um... You know, this is this is this is a a, a long time coming. Uh, we 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 supposed to have done this interview two years ago. Two years ago, big <laughs> facts, right? But I'm happy we we're doing it now because uh, not only um, have you like solidified yourself as the boat goat, um, you've also uh, touched so many um, different aspects of business. You made so much money off of boats, right? And put all his business out. They made so much money off of boats. He's like, yo. Where else I'm going to put this in? So you have vast experiences in, in different things. Uh, but also, though, like you have an interesting story that I never knew until recently that I want to dig into as well. Um, but before we even get all get there, for those who don't know, who is Shad the Boat Goat? Man, as you said it, man, I'm Shad the Boat Goat from Washington, D.C., man. Uh, I like to tell people I'm just... That 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 guy that 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 really come in and, and dial in when it when it comes to coming from the bottom and up. Yeah, I'm really him. Like yeah. we get a lot of people who say they got that story, yeah, but it's really not. Yeah. Um. But you know, growing up in in D.C. with my mother, uh, who of course, uh, we in the projects who yeah. abused, you know, drugs, uh, alcohol, still to this day actually. Um. Father who wasn't really there, but for some reason God just he gave me that mindset to just keep going. You know, I always looked at the the negative and the the downfalls and just use that as my upbringing yeah. and the positivity on, on on the other aspect. Yeah, and but real quick, when you said still still there, what do you mean by that? She's still abusing the drugs and alcohol. Or, okay. I just had an event, uh, my second event, live event in D.C. the other day, and um, she talked about it for about a week. Yeah. Excited, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm like, alright, cool. I'll make sure you're gonna get there. I was gonna send my driver to pick her up. On Saturday morning, she called me, and I heard it in her voice. Wow. She's like, do you still want me to come? I was like, I do, Mom, but you can't embarrass me like that. Wow. So, uh, yeah, she still she still struggled uh, to this day yeah. with, the, with the crack, with yep. the PCP. Yeah. Um, and just to keep it 100, I don't want to go all the way back, but I can, 
because I know it's a lot of people that struggle with that, but they yeah. don't have the strength, right? Right. Um, but I can just remember probably like three months ago. Yeah. I was speaking in D.C., Philly, and then Miami. Yeah. And a day before I was supposed to have left, I got a phone call from my, uh, my cousin. She like, yo, you need to go get your mother. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's up? Like, what I need to go get her for? She like, you need to go get her. So she sent me a picture. My mother's face cut open. Wow. She had got hit in the face. Uh, with a chair so i automatically start grabbing my shit ready yeah, to yeah, go yeah, out yeah, yeah. and go see what's up but long story short i get out there come to realize she was she was high and she was drunk wow. she tried to get an interfere with somebody else stuff and a dude she hit him with the chair he took it hit her back right but it broke me down like it, yeah. i'm 32 now it's like i'm numb to it it's like I'm, I'm accustomed to it yeah but i broke down like three months ago because it's like damn like you really still doing this yeah. 30 plus years later yeah uh but more more so she did it in front of my daughter right right my daughter she's never seen me drink she definitely don't see me do any type of drug so right. uh when she did it in front of her it was like yo like i'm gonna have to back up a little bit like you moms yeah. i love you but i'm gonna just have to I'm gonna have to back up because it yeah. crushed me. Like right. I, I was crying and everything. Like yeah. even in speaking, when I was, I still went to Philly. I still went to Miami. Yeah. I was crying because yeah. I got when I got to Miami. They like, yo, you need to, you need to come home. Like yeah. I know the bread is 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 where you at, but yeah. you need to come on back. I get back. She don't tore my crib up. Wow. My 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 daughter like, dad, what's wrong with grandma? Like wow. she just she just was zoned out. Like it wow. had to have been probably at least a week of her being high yeah. the way she was going off. So I told yeah. her, I said, mom, you got three choices. I said, you can come and live with me. Mm -hmm. You can go into a program. Yeah. Or we can go ahead and cut our relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you did that to me as a child, and now you're you're allowing my my daughter to see this. Wow. You know, I'm a I'm a single father, you know, to my daughter. Mm -hmm. And you know, I expected you to be there as a grandmother, as a as a female, you know, person in her life. And yeah. you still doing what you was doing back then. So I just had to tell that, man, because I know it's a lot of people who, who's going through that or who have gone through that, and they just don't know how. And yeah. all I can just say, pr stay prayed up and keep going. You, you, and, and you just took the interview in a different direction, um, and I appreciate your transparency. And that's why, like, when you said it, I caught it, but I was like, yeah. wait, hold on, let me, let me clarify. Because um, honestly, I was like, nah, he, he didn't, that's not what he meant. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, is, is he being that transparent? But I appreciate it. Um, because, you know, as a, as a seven figure plus entrepreneur who is, you know, killing it. And we're going to talk about, you know, in, 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 in what ways, you know, you're killing it monetarily. Um, this is like really showing the humanness around success, you know, because I think that a lot of people, um, uh, see successful people, um, and believe that that success cures everything. Not at all. When it doesn't, right? Like there's still um, things that we got to heal from. There's still things that um, kind of get in our way. But regardless of that, we don't. We can't make excuses because there's still people that that count on us, right? Yeah. There's still, you know, your daughter's still counting on you. Uh, you got mentor, you know, mentees that count on you. You got people who are you know, looking to you for guidance and, you know, while you're going through what you're going through, you still have to, like you said, stay prayed up and still keep, uh, keep pushing and kind of getting to that next level. And so I appreciate that, uh, transparency. Um, you know, you know, how has that, you know, and, and, and again, that's why the, the, the interview is in a different direction because for me, my question was going to, you know, I almost in my head because I knew about your mom's drug abuse, but I thought it was over. Nah. And I and my question was going to be like, yo, how you know how has that impacted you, kind of growing up and helped you become who you are? But it's an ongoing thing, and so my question is, um, how has it shaped you? You know, as a as a person, as a businessman, as a father. You know, uh, um, like I said, this. Growing up and, and seeing the effects of the drugs, the effects of not having good credit and so forth, you know, and, and still to this day, it's like, all right, I see the outcome if I go and get hired up. Yeah. I see the outcome if, I, if I'm if i going in the back and, and knocking back all these, these drinks or whatever. So it's really, it's, it's, it's helped me to stay level. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't want to, I don't even want to touch a, 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 a piece of a, a crack or right. Let alone, you know, they, they make it a thing like, oh, you can do some lines, you you making money, yeah, but yeah. nah, because I, I've watched 
damn near everybody in my family crash out. Yeah. Like I've really been the one who broke the cycle. Like yeah. that used to be my title. I broke mm-hmm. the I broke the cycle. Did you? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but just seeing my mother, you know, hot up, it was like, nah, I can't do it. Even down to the weed, you know, people say the weed is great, but I don't, I don't want anything that's going to take me off balance yeah. where I can't think straight or for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And so w- walk, walk us through this evolution of, a becoming a businessman, right? Um, you know, you know, obviously growing or maybe not obviously, but growing up in, you know, projects in DC, um, you know, I'm from Harlem, so I already know how, you know what I mean? DC get busy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we, you know, we, we hear, we hear the stories of, you know, guys from Harlem going OT, trying to get money in DC. Right. So we already know what that is. Um, coming from that environment, um, you know, how did you like, like, how did you transition into, uh, the businessman that you are today? Um, I, I think it's just, it, again, this, God, like he, yeah. for some reason, just always say, had me in another mindset, in another zone, you yeah. know, growing up. I was, I was always a leader. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to be the boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, even from a kid, you know, I was out in the summertime cutting grass, mm-hmm. washing cars. Like I always wanted to work. But then it came to a point to where I was like, dad, my mother keep coming home after working double shifts and talking about how much her body hurt and, 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 and she's still living paycheck to paycheck. I got to start my own business. Mm-hmm. So I got into the whole CEO mind frame probably when I was like around 11 years old, right? I understood the side hustle going to put money in my pocket. Yeah. But as far as business wise, I used to travel from DC down to Chattanooga, Tennessee every, every summer with my great grandmother and I would uh, see grooms shuttle service mm-hmm. and, um, I was I was intrigued by that. I was like, "This a shuttle service. They making a lot of money." Mm-hmm. So when I got old, that's my first business, the shuttle service. Wow. I still own it to this day. That was my first business, eighteen years old in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So I just started doing research and research, and then I I got bold and I reached out to the CEO. I'm like, "Listen, I'm seventeen. I got good credit. I'm trying to start a business." Mm-hmm. And um, that's how I tapped into the whole business world. But yeah. I didn't understand systems and foundation and automation and all that stuff. All I knew was I own this. My name is on it. We making money. But I didn't understand the whole back end of business then. Mm-hmm. But it's always I just been a leader like God has always had it on my heart. Yeah. To be a leader. And 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 then um, you were in the military. Yep. Right. Talk, talk to us about that. So <laughs> growing up, I really, you know, like everyone else, it was either you want to become a basketball player, football player, actor, something like that, right? They wanted to be the celebrity, but um, again, my mother trying to fight this 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 drug abuse. Mm-hmm. We went down to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to stay with my aunt, just to kind of give her like a couple of months away from D.C. with the PCPs. Down there, she couldn't find it, mm-hmm. so we get down there. And at the time, I wanted to be a police officer. Mm. And so my aunt's uncle, I mean, my aunt's husband was in the military. Mm. And I just thought I was fascinated. You know, these BDUs, the uniform. I'm like, you clean, boy, (laughs) every day. I was like, yo, I want to do that. And he was like, well, you can do both. You can be a police and in the military. Mm. And since then, I was like, oh, bad. We about to go in the military. And then I had a couple of aunts that were in the military as well and a couple of uncles. So I'm like, all right, bet. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to go in the military. So I did ROTC and all that stuff. I ended up getting a full ride to college, but again, we back to my mother's habit. I'm like, yo, I got to go. Like, yeah. this this not it. So I said, you know, forget the, the full ride. I get to college when I get in the military. And so I ended up going into the Army, and I wanted to be the, this military police officer, but I ain't score as high on the ASVAB. Mm. My recruiter, he tricked me. He, like, logistical specialist is Law enforcement. I'm thinking law enforcement, logistical. They sound about right. All right, bro. Let's run. It. Let me go ahead and sign the dot. Yeah. I get in there and the supply. So my first two years in the military, I was miserable. Yeah. Right. I didn't understand how to be tactful. Mm. I was coming from the projects like I'm going to tell these people how I feel. So I was kind of getting in trouble a little bit. But then I had an NCO. Uh, shout out to a song first class fair. He pulled me outside one and he said, crossing like, I know you smart, mm. but you got somebody in there that outranks you. You have to be tactful. You know what that means? And I'm like, nah, he's like, it's getting your point across without being disrespectful. Mm. So since then, I've always led by that. So I, I, I switched things up. I ended up making E5 um, in two years. That's like the fastest way you can make a uh, sergeant in the army. So I made my E5. I reclassed to military police. But then when I got over there, 
it's like you got to be clicked up, mm. right? And they all white boys. So here it is. I'm, I'm at the time I was probably 20 years old, mm. uh, from DC, black boy. I just ain't ain't fit in. Yeah. Um, also because I wasn't anal, I didn't be little soldiers. And I, I remember one instance. Um, I went into um, to before we go out on the road, we'll go in, into a, a briefing. If we got any bolos or anything, we need to be looking out for as we on on patrol. And uh, this white, uh, this white uh, uh, E5, we both the same rank. Soldier came in probably a couple of seconds later, and he just started going off on him. And I just in front of everybody, I start going off on the other E5. I'm like, bro, you can't talk to soldiers mm-hmm. like that. And 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 mainly because I understood the stress that soldiers went through, yeah. and we had soldiers that were killing them, th- themselves at the mm-hmm. time. So me not knowing it, knowing anything, this guy was getting promoted a couple of weeks later. Wow! So he got promoted and he just gave me hell, man. Wow. Um, so I, I I stayed around for a little bit, but then again I had my shuttle service, and um, we they were DUIs. This is what made me get out right here. Mm. They had they had a lot of DUIs. Although we were military police officers, we still had soldiers who were getting a DUI. So I had my shuttle service. I go to my first sergeant, and I'm like, uh, first sergeant, I want to offer my services for free for the soldiers, so we can go ahead and dead that when they mm-hmm. coming out from the club, we'll take them back on post. So he like, all right, cool, that's a good idea. My first sergeant used to live right around the corner from. They used to think I was a drug dealer <laughs> <laughs> because it was E five living with the E sevens living, E eights living there. <laughs> so he like, yeah, cool. So the next day. I bring in my business cards or whatever, and he say, I go to him, I'm, ex- I'm excited, I couldn't even sleep the night. He like, um, he said, come and see me in the morning, go give him the cards. He like, Son Cross, you need to go look at policy number 11. Mm. I'm like, all right, cool, but like, what's up? He like, go look at policy number 11. I go look at policy number 11, it was unauthorized use of secondary job, meaning mm. I didn't get permission from the commander to have a second job. Mm. Mind you, my business never took me away from the military. I was right. always on time, Stand for extra, you know, extra, extra people that they needed, all that stuff. So right. I go back. I'm like, all right, I read it. What's up? He like, commander want to see you at 1300. I'm like, all right, cool. But what's up? You ain't telling me now. He said, commander, talk to you. I get there on the red carpet. I'm getting ready to Article 15. For those of you that don't know, in the military, Article 15 is just like going to court, mm-hmm. right? The the commander is the is the judge. Mm-hmm. So he started reading me, and I'm looking at my first time like, are you serious? Like, right. here it is. I'm trying to do something great. For the company, I'm getting red, so I ended up getting um, I ended up getting uh, seven seven days extra duty, and they took my pay for seven days. Wow. And I'm like, yo, here it is. I'm always on time. I'm always raising my hand. They need extra people, whatever. They need people to stay behind, work another shift on the road, or go to another company and work extra. Like I was doing, I was like, these people don't care about me for real. Mm. Like here it is. I'm risking my life daily. And they don't care about me. Right. So I'll go to the doctor. I'm like, yo, I tell my command, I mean, the, the major there, he's like, uh, I'm like, I got to get out. And he said, listen, Sergeant Crossing, before you get out, have a plan. Mm. So I tell all my mentees now, like, before you leave that nine to five, make sure you have a real plan in Thanks. place. Yeah. So he like, um, he's like, you need to get your medical uh, good. You need to make sure that your medical is squared away. And so I started going to sick off for about nine months. And um, my commander, probably like two months later, he like, you still got that business. I told you to stop that business because my, like, my shuttle service used to come past my company every day. <laughs> right. So he was pissed. He was right. hot. But I'm like, yo, this dude like really pissed that I, right. I own my own business yeah. like as a young black man and yeah. you can't tell me what to do. So long story short, I ended up, I get that, um, that medical and I get out, mm. come back to D.C., 1800 every month from the ch- from Uncle Sam. I'm like, all right, I'm good. good right. But that 1800 put me back in the projects. I'm like, no, nah, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I move an hour outside of DC. Uh-huh. I had the plan. My plan was just to live off of this 1800. Yep. But that 1800 wasn't doing it. So I went back to what I knew, mm. what I seen growing up, which mm. was selling drugs. Mm. So I started doing my thing in the street. I got it to where I had seven people working around me. Wow. And, and then those people still leadership. Say, yeah, yeah. I, everything. Listen, everything was ran as a business, right? Everything was ran as a business. So I had this one client. Damn, man, I'm kind of going. I'm I'm kind of going past your question. No, no, it's good. It's it, good. Yeah. So I, I'm leading into the whole boat thing, right? So he, um, every week I had this one client, white dude. He used to always come with me with this raggedy car behind him, mm-hmm. right? So after this third or fourth trip, I'm like, bro, like, why do you always come here with this raggedy car behind you? He like, this is how I pay you. And we laugh, and I'm like, nah, like, seriously, he said, nah, Ace, this is how I pay you. I said, bro, like, for real, tell me, like, why you always said, this is my trucking company. This is really how I pay you. Mm-hmm. So he told me about uh, centraldispatch.com. So anybody that's interested in 
transport and automobiles, go to centraldispatch.com. That's a load board. Because mm-hmm. when I first started my trucking company, I thought I had to go to all these different dealerships to get clientele. But that load board right there did it all for me. Mm. So I got into that. I took my last rear break. Because, again, those seven people that were working for me, they started to get arrested. Mm. So I'm like, yo. I got a master's degree in criminal justice. I got a military background. I'd be a freaking fool to go to jail. Yo, you so, had a master's and you yeah, strapping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I ain't even get into it. You know, <laughs> I, I was a pimp when I was in the army. Like pimp pimp. I was a pimp when I was in the army. Yo. I never told this story. Hey, yo, I, yo, I knew DC boys got, got busy, I, but. I never told this story. Yeah. So this real, real, real quick, right? Because I was a hustler. This this little this little $1,000 check that I was getting every two weeks in the Army just wasn't cutting it. Right. The business fresh off the ground. So I'm like, I got to get it some other way. This is when Backpage was in play, right? Yeah. So I had a little chick that I was I was messing with, and yeah. then she she started messing with Backpage. Mm-hmm. So I stopped dealing with. Her. I'm like, I can't mess with you. You on Backpage, baby girl, right? right? So I said, but well, let's go ahead and start a business. She like, I right, bet. So she ended up rounding up some girls or whatever. Damn, I hope I don't get in trouble for this. <laughs> so she started rounding <laughs> some chicks up, right? Yeah, yeah. And we used to go out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because we knew soldiers was looking for chicks. Mm-hmm. So we'll set up the profile. I'll drop them off and I'll drive them. But we weren't letting the dudes do them, right? As uh-huh. soon as they go in, I will bust in the door and I and I'll show my badge and I tell them, get up out of there. But you know before well, you don't know, but before you do your thing, you gotta put the money on on a on a on a on a uh, dress or whatever. Right. So the money's laying there, they freaking out, they scared, so they just roll up out. So I come in and hey, don't let me catch you over here. <laughs> <Get some. Word. laughs> I had to yeah, do what I had delicious. to do, right? Like, yeah. That little that little thousand yeah, dollars yeah, wasn't yeah, doing yeah, it for me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, so anyway, back to my story. So this guy, he was coming to me every every week getting these pills. He told me about the trucking game. Yeah. So then I took my last real bread. I'm like, yo, I got to get out of this. Yeah. So I took that, and I went and got my trucks. I still got that trucking company to this day. I wow. uh, got a, a solidified contract with Mercedes. So mm-hmm. every year, we doing like 700K, whether wow. my trucks move or not. Wow. Back in COVID, they ain't moving off wow, for two years. Right, I was right, still right. getting that bread in. Wow, nice. But I took that. Um, in two years, man, I was just literally working like 20, 22 hours a day. Wow. Like my neighbor and I, we in a truck. We take a little nap as we drive or yeah. whatever, but we was getting to it. But I started to realize it was weighing on my children. Yeah. Like They're like, Daddy, you never home. I'm like, I got to get this money. How many then, children you have? Two. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? That's telling me something. So yeah. I had to slow down. So I just promised. I ain't know what I was going to do. And but you I said earlier like, you're single parents. So it's to both? So my, I, got, I got joint custody with my son and I'm full time with my daughter. Gotcha. Yep. So uh, I'm like, we're going we gonna to spend more time together. So again, 22 hours, like this trucking thing ain't going to do it for me no more. So... I had a bow rider at the time, B O W R I D E R. I had a bow rider. I took that bow rider and I traded in for that pontoon, mm. right? So one day we out, we chilling in the water with the kids and I, and we pull up to go have lunch. And this dude, he's like, yo, he started me a little bit because I'm wrapping my, you know, tying my boat off. He's like, yo, um, you rent your boat? And I'm like, man, get the hell out of it. No, I rent no boat. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the right mindset, right? I'm right. just getting out of the military. I'm just getting out of the street. So I'm big head. I'm like, nah, this is me. Like, I'm flexing, right. whatever. Right. But then, again, I understand, the, I understand being obedient and listening to what God talks to you, mm. right? So when, when he did that and I shoot him off, I'm like, yo, wait a minute. This is God talking to me again. Mm. He, he, he told me about the trucking thing to get me out of the street. But now he's giving me a whole nother place. So I hop off the boat. I run out the door, and I'm like, yo, like, what you trying to do? My bad, man. You just kind of scared me a little bit. He mm-hmm. said, man, I just want to take my kids out on the, on the water, man. I just want to mm-hmm. take the family out. So I'm like, all right, cool. We exchange information. And as I'm walking away in my head, I'm like, man, this dude ain't ever going to call me, man. Yeah. Sure enough, the kids and I, we out again. Wow. Dude called me the next day. Wow. And I'm just like, damn, like, I got the kids, bro. I got to go <laughs> drop them all. But my grandmother lived down the street, so I hit her up, and she like, all right, I'll be there. She get the kids. I go back to the dude, and as soon as he get on the, on a boat, he like, yo, how much I owe you? And I'm like, Shh, 400, yeah. right? Because at the time, I had I leveraged my personal credit, mm-hmm. and I had this loan, and my loan was only like 367, 397. Mm-hmm. And so um, he paid that, and I'm just like, damn, if I do this once a month, mm. this boat free. Right. And I just put together what I knew, you know, coming from the club, promoting, just getting these flyers together, and all that, put it together. And it took off from there. Wow. But go ahead, because I can keep going on and on. I mean, no, no, I, work, I, I, I love it. And and then so like you know, just 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 knowing that transition, which is good. And again, um, you know, I love um, the realness of this story, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people go through this where um, 
they might think it's like this genius plan, but sometimes it's just, yo, I'm telling just you, it's, be obedient. It's being obedient. Right. I promise you. Right. Like every business that I've owned, I've never set, besides my shuttle service, yeah. I never set back, wrote no business plan about it, said, yeah. I, I want to do this. It was all me being obedient and just listening when God say move. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. And so let, let's, let's talk about the pricing model and um, marketing strategy behind scaling a boat rental business right because um now you got you know you 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 was obedient you figured it out i bet you should be in the boat business um first of all that's so unorthodox right to because i mean when i think about boats i think about old white men i'll be right. honest like i'm yep. not like there's no there's nothing about about you that screams boat right. to me you know what i'm saying um i think i think old white men um that's it you know what i'm saying uh, but you've been able to um, price these, market them, and really create, um, you know, again, like, you're the only one I know in our community, right? I don't know if there's any more, but from, you know, the circles and just kind of seeing who, who, you know, who does this at a high level, uh, you are the boat go, right? right? Talk to us about that, you know, that, that marketing strategy, that, that pricing strategy. Like, how are you able to scale this? Uh, as you know, as a business. Um, so just like I said, as I was sitting back on a boat today with, with with him, and he paid me that four hundred, I was like, man, this easy work right here. Because I used to also promote in the club, so I knew if you go to the club, when people come out, nine times out of ten, they got a fly or a business card on their window, mm. giving the next drink. So that's what I did. I put like a thousand uh, flyers together. I got me a little couple of youngers from around the way, paid them like twenty dollars, and I just had them tagging the cars at the clubs. But then I took it a step further, right? I'm a natural flirt. So <laughs> I used to go into these apartment buildings. I ain't gonna say I used to, I still do it. I go into these apartment buildings, I make sure I'm looking good, I'm smelling good, and nine times out of 10, that general manager is a female. Mm. I would take a thing of roses in there mm. and I'll go introduce myself. Hey, I'm Shia from Shia's America Bowl and Jeski Runner. I just wanted to come and introduce myself and also let you know what I do here in the community, mm. whatever. And I was doing that because I understood that she had three or 400 residents within that building mm. that all she got to do is send this one email blast and I mm. got three to 400 potential customers. Wow. That's one play. The second thing is the hotels, right? Mm -hmm. I know me personally, when I travel, the first thing I ask when I get there is, what is it to eat that's good around here? And mm. what is it to do near right. here, right? So me knowing that, I would ask for the concierge manager and I would go and, and build a relationship with them because I understand building relationships can put you in different places in different rooms. Facts. So I, I, I led with, listen, again, this, I'm Shia from Shia's America Boat and Jet Ski Run. I just want to come and introduce myself. Uh, I own the largest boat and jet ski rental here in D.C. But in addition to that, I wanted to give you and your employees a 15% discount. Mm. And I wanted to give 10% to the guests. The reason why I gave that 15% to the concierge and the employees is because I know they're going to talk more about my business mm. if I give them that higher rate. Yeah. And then they're not only going to talk to their guests. They're going to be talking to their friends and family because mm. I tell them, send it to all your friends and your family mm. as well. Um, what else marketing it? The billboards, the mm. yard signs, the airplane with the sound on the back, mm. uh, the bus stops, uh, <laughs> IG, of course, you yeah. know, Facebook, of course. Yeah. But as far as marketing, it was like I took it to another level last year. Yeah. Like yeah. it wasn't that just like we, we've got come spoil you with just social media. People mm -hmm. don't understand the footwork. Right. When, when somebody, when, when they see me, a young black man saying he owns the largest boating jet ski rental yeah. in D.C., they want to do business with mm -hmm. me. And another thing, this is another drink that I, that like changes the game for me. When I go shopping, right, Louis, Gucci, wherever I go, I'm always asking doctor's offices, the, 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 uh, the courthouse, mm -hmm. The, the fire departments, police stations, whenever I go here, I'm asking to speak to the manager and I'm asking the manager, like, listen, I'm, I'm not no secret shopper or anything mm -hmm. like that, but how's the morale here in your company? Mm -hmm. And they looking at me crazy, like, it's all right, like, wow, what's up, why you asking me that? Well, why don't you come out on the water? Why don't you shut the, shut the doors for a day and come out on the water and mm -hmm. do some te team building on the water? Mm -hmm. And every single year now, I have dentists that come out, I have lawyers that come out. So not only am I putting this into their head, mm. but in the back end, I'm building a network. Right. Right. So right. I can pick up the phone. I can call a judge. I can pick up the phone. I can call an attorney. Mm -hmm. I'm calling these high profile in individuals, but I also put that in their ear. Yeah. So you got a business. Make sure you start hitting up the police right, stations, right. And the courthouses, the lawyers, like yeah. get them folks a discount. Yeah. And, and so and so who's your target market? Right. Like 
who is the person that could benefit the most from so first of all two two things because i because i know you also teach people um how to start this business themselves which i want to go into because you even have a five-day challenge that i think is phenomenal uh because i know that it, it, there's a low barrier to entry like yep. you know it it only takes about 5k right but before before then though right like as somebody who owns a boat business, jet skis, who is your ideal client that you sell, you know, you sell to? Listen, I tell people this is for anybody that wants to make passive income. Mm. Like I literally have a yacht all the way in Cancun, Mexico. I'm literally going to uh, Turk and Caicos in a couple of days mm. to set up shop over there. Wow. So this is for anybody that's looking to make any passive income. Like you don't have to be where your boat's or jet skis are located. You don't have to live in Miami. Mm. You know, a lot of people think Miami when you right. hear a boat. Right. Nah, you don't want to go in Miami. There's mm. already five, 600 people you got to compete with. Like, mm. you want to go into cities. Again, you go to Google right now and you type in jet ski rental DC, number one, mm. I'm going to pop up. So, right. anyone that's willing to put in that work, that ground, build that foundation, that system is for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, 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 so, and so now, right, like, um, how lucrative is this business? You know, I hate, you know, comparing, man. But, you know, in today's world, people hear Toro. Yeah. People hear Airbnb. Even real estate, mm -hmm. right? You can you can definitely, you can buy houseboats on the water, right? Mm -hmm. I love to compare and I, I participate in all, right? But ain't nothing touching the boats. Mm -hmm. Nothing's touching the boats, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that simply is, with my condo, it has to be rented out 25 to 28 days in order for me to, I don't know, 2000 profit, right? Mm -hmm. My boat, I'm renting it out for $400 an hour. I'm making $1,200 every three hours mm -hmm. stateside. Mm -hmm. Over in Cancun, I'm, I'm charging $800 an hour, so I'm making $2,400 mm -hmm. in three hours, mm -hmm. right? So it's, I got this condo, 25 to 27 days, or go get it in three hours. Mm -hmm. Toro, with the economy whips, you're going to make only 1000 or 1500 mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. You got to do that for 30 days. I could send my boat out for three hours and I'm going to make the same bread. Mm -hmm. And half of my fleet, I have 10 boats in D.C. Half of my fleet is for people who know how to operate a boat and they don't need a captain. They're mm -hmm. still paying 1250 for three hours. Mm -hmm. So it's literally just like Airbnb and Toro. You just handing over the keys and letting them do them. Right. Right. But it's, it's also other mo models within uh, the boat game, too. Right. So. Business to business is just like I was talking about doing, coming out doing the team building, right? Mm -hmm. If you're an introvert, right? Watch this play, y'all. If you're an introvert, you don't like being around a lot of people, right? What you're going to do is you're going to go get your $5,000 boat. You're going to look this up on BoatTrader.com. You're going to look on Facebook Market. You're going to look on Craigslist. You're going to go to Google and type in boats for sale near me, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go over to West Marine. You're going to find yourself a three-man tube, right? Three-man tube. You're going to take that three-man tube. You're going to do... Uh, 15 minute ride, $75 per person, which mm -hmm. means you're making $225 every 15 minutes. We have four 15 minute increments within an hour. You're making $900 an hour doing this, right? Then you do that for eight hours a day, that's $7,200 a day. Mm -hmm. So not only did I go and make my bread back in that same day, we also in all green and all profits, right? Mm -hmm. I got some more models, mm, but I ain't going mm, to get too spicy, man. I'm mm. going to slow down, man. Can we do something for the people, though? Yeah, please. Let's do it. Let's Let, do it. I, I want to get everybody that's watching right now, I want to give every one of you my ebook and a, a three-hour master class completely for free. Mm. All you have to do is text BOAT, B-O-A-T, to 202-919-8930. Hold on. Let me make sure I got that <laughs> right. Let Yo, me make sure that. I got that well, right. He, he, he give, he give, he giving out, he giving out gifts. We not even at that portion of the show yet. He said, "Yo, let me just give out yeah, some man, gifts." Yeah, man, we gotta bless the people. You know yeah. why? Because, uh, like, honestly, my mentor, I've, I've been with him for the last twenty four hours, yeah. and he really just told me, like, "Shot, I know what you've learned. Yeah, I know the type of people you've been around, but yeah. just take all that, throw it out the window. Mm. Because if you really doing this for the people, yeah, that's what it's gonna be about. If you yeah. really pouring into the people, the money is gonna come. Facts, right? So me understanding that again, I'm gonna be obedient because yeah. it's not him talking; it's God talking." Absolutely. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Right, so I understand gifts giving because Absolutely. it's gonna come back. Yeah. So again, text boat to two zero two nine one nine eight nine three zero. You're gonna get that free ebook, yeah. and you're gonna get a free uh, three hour master class about boats, jet skis, and some credit stuff. What's what's the what's the um, 
the biggest resistance that you hear from people, right? Because I could only imagine, like I know we we, we talked, uh, you know, behind the scenes, where I mean, we you could you know talk about it now, but like literally, it takes five k, yeah, right. It's not like a whole lot of money. It takes five k to yeah. really get into business, um, and and with that five k, you could literally scale a six to seven figure business, um. And I could imagine most people who are listening right now probably can can get 5K. Um, but what's the biggest resistance like when, when, when you talk to people? Exactly what you said. People thinking you got to go out and spend it. Uh-huh. I get the, the number one uh, answer I get is 100K. I need 100K. No, you don't need right. 100. You don't even need 50K. You don't even need 20K. Mm. You don't even need 15. Mm. All you need is five. I just gave y'all to play. I just showed right. you how to take 5,000 or 5,500 and make 7,200 in a day. But that's the biggest thing. People wow. think I have to be there. I have to be where my equipment is located. Yeah. You don't have to live as long as you have a system. Like, I haven't been out on the water for two years. Wow. I have not touched the water. I have a VA who's all the way in the Philippines, or well, several VAs all the way in the Philippines who take care of all of my text messages, my phone calls, my emails. Like, it's it sometimes I have to call them, like, yo, what's going on? Besides me picking up my phone and looking at what, what's going on, I got to call them, like, yo, what's, what, what we got cracking for today? Wow. Right? So you don't have to be there. And then, two, you don't have to go and spend all this money. You can literally, again, I got into it by leveraging my personal credit. But what we know now is that business funding. So you mm. take that business funding and you run it up. Mm. You don't need a whole lot of money. Yeah. I like my RRI. Like, I don't like having my money out there for years. I like my bread back in a couple of months. Facts, man. Facts. So is, is this good, right? Because a lot of people who watch this show uh, is what we like to call Henry's, right? High earners, not rich yet, right? So they make a lot of money. Um, they are you know they're constantly investing they're constantly uh you know options trading like they're finding different ways for them to stretch their money out um as somebody who may have a nine to five making a lot of money not they don't have that much time right is this the type of business that they can get into absolutely again yeah. you do not have to be there you can wow. literally put a system in. i in fact i haven't seen my yacht in mexico since last march mm. i paid 375 i made my money back in three months wow I have not been over there. Wow. So this year, we, we again, we about to tap into Puerto Rico. We about to tap into Turk and Caicos. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be there. As long as you got that system and the foundation, that's what I didn't understand. As long right. as you have that automation and that system, you never have to show up. Wow. You got wow. the captains who's going to do the work for you. Or, again, you got a lot of people who know how to operate a boat who just don't own a boat. Wow. Wow. Yep. And so talk, talk to us about your five-day challenge, right? Your, your challenge... Uh, is going to, you know, like, like, what, like what are they going to learn in man, five days, listen, man? As you see, I can go on and on and on and yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I've been, I've been t- I told you behind the scenes, like, my only issue is, bro, I don't know how to stop. <laughs> uh, but what you're going to learn is you're going to learn, one, how do you actually go out and rob the bank legally? How do you go out to the banks, get this business funding, mm-hmm. or how do you leverage your personal credit to utilize that money to then pour into um, the boats or your jet skis. Mm. Uh, And then I'm just going to break down my my, my different plays. Like, I gave y'all the boat play, my jet ski play. Uh, Again, we know I was the biggest drug dealer, right? But Mm. I was still wise and smart. I went Mm. out and got a $35,000 credit card. I took that credit card and I went out and bought myself six Cedu Sparks. It only cost me $33,600. I still have $1,400 left on that credit card, Mm. right? I took that $1,400 and I used that for my insurance down payment. But I took those, those six jet skis and I, I rent them out for 150 per hour. Again, I'm back making to $900 an hour. I do that for eight hours a day. I, we do it for 12. But for teaching purposes, if you do 900 times eight, we're back at 7,200. Mm. So every single day, I can add onto my, my fleet. I can grow my fleet. Mm. But you can also do this with one jet ski, right? You go out, spend that, that $5,600. You can rent it out for 150 an hour. You're still making $900 a day. Right. You never have to go to work. You can literally pay a high school student or a college student $20 an hour, and that's great money for somebody that age Facts. to go out there and run a business for you. Mm. So you can so run not, a play. Not, look, $900 a day. A day. Which is, which is, I mean, I can't do the math real quick in my head, but 9000 so that's nine. Thousand uh, times three is about twenty seven thousand. You can run it up, man. A month. You can run it up, man. <laughs> wow. So so and and then you could pay somebody minimum wage or not even minimum that wage. Minimum wage. Minimum twenty wage. is the hey you you rich if you're Facts. in high school make it twenty dollars an hour. Facts. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. And so with um, you know, your your challenge, I'm I'm assuming there's VIP, people can spend time with you inside yep. and talk to you, so, ask questions. So VIP, right? I also have I also have um I have quarterly um in person events. Mm -hmm. So with VIP, of course, you spend another thirty minutes to an hour behind after class to ask whatever questions you have. Mm -hmm. Uh I got some I can't tell you what you're gonna get, but you got another bonus that's right. gonna come. Right. Um then you get that that ticket to the live event when you come to DC. You're gonna meet me, you're gonna meet all my, my high level entrepreneurial friends. Yeah. Um VIP also comes with uh another we ain't, we can't tell them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you better get the yeah, VIP. Just, That's just what I'm saying. Like, yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so you know, like, out of all the things you've done, right? Because like, so so far, I mean, like you said, you got boats, uh, trucking company. Uh, you've done, you know, you've seen some money, a lot of money. Government contracting. Government contracting. Um, is boats still the thing that you love the best? Listen. Is that is that the if I can shut everything else down, yeah, I will go overseas. Like the yacht in Mexico is doing no less than two hundred K a month. Wow. That's why I'm going to two hundred K a month. Two hundred K a month. A month. Minimum. That's on that's on a wow. bad month. Right? Yeah. If I can shut everything else down in the States, I will go overseas. Wow. Why? Because when people travel, they want to go and see that beautiful water. They're right. not going state to state for real. They're going right. overseas. Right. So Again, we're sitting in Puerto Rico. I'm looking at Dominican Republic right now. Wow. Turkey and Caicos is done. Like, when you come over there, I got the whole package together. You got the yacht. You got the horses. You're going to get the ATVs. And I got you in the luxury uh, black on black when you get there. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Wow. And, wow. And so, like, why aren't so many? Is, is it just knowledge, though? Like, it's just that people don't know? Like, why people aren't just people don't know. I didn't know. Like, yeah. this was, again, me being obedient yeah, and, just, yeah, yeah. and just going all in. Yeah. Right. Me seeing the opportunity and just taking off with the people just don't know. Yeah. Like 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 you said, like they haven't heard of a boat. Nothing. Right. Until me. Right. Yeah. But this is it. This is wow. it's a no brainer. Like I, I recommend this business to anybody. Wow. That's that's willing to put in the work behind the scenes so that it flourishes by itself. Wow. You got to put in that groundwork right. in the back end in yeah. order for it to do its own thing. And, and, and is there a such thing, though, like can there be saturation in this business right because you got to think like how many boats can you you know what I'm we, saying? we got 50 states yeah we got 50 states yeah why well, where is it saturated right. the only place that's saturated is miami right where everybody want to go nah i like like when i say you want to go into these cities where you don't have competition again when you go to google and you type in jet ski rental dc yeah. my company pops up mm -hmm. it's monopoly for me and another thing i like to do we can get them another play i like to put a business inside of a business mm -hmm. right and this is what I mean. When you go to my website, www.smbjsrental.com, when you go to the website and you, you click book the jet ski, right, it says 150. Mm. But by the time you check out, it says 181. The only reason why it's 181 is because, again, I put a business inside of a business. I want to take an extra $1,200 a, a, a day and use that to pay my staff, mm. my overhead. So that 7200 that I'm making every day, I'm not even touching it. That's going into the bank. Mm. The way that I'm doing that is because that $25 that everybody is paying uh, with the jet skis, you do that 25 times 6 and do that times 8, that's $1,200 a day. Mm. So I'm taking that 1200 and I'm paying my, my overhead. I'm mm. not even using my 72. Wow. I don't think they caught that right there, right? Wow. But another thing that you could do, and the car, the car rental places, they do this as well, right? And I stopped doing parking because that was just for parking. The reason why I stopped doing parking is because I would have people who would come in one car together. And like, yo, we need, we need that 25 back because we came in one car. Right. So when I realized that, I was like, all right, back. Let, what, what else can I utilize that they already have to use that I can charge them for? Mm -hmm. So in D.C., we have to give them a test before they go out on the water, mm -hmm. right? You can use a test or you can use insurance. I recommend the insurance play simply because if a person comes in to rent your equipment and you say, hey, you can either pay me $35 and your, your insurance is covered. You can go out here and you can crash it up or you can pay a $1,000 uh, deposit. What are they paying? That mm -hmm. 35 Facts. That's going to add up. Yeah. That's actually over 1200 right there. Mm. But that bread adds up. So I'm taking that extra twelve to 1400 mm -hmm. buying lunch for the staff, mm. taking care of my insurance, my gas. Like, I'm taking that extra bread, to, mm. <laughs> right? And another inside of the business, yeah, uh, inside, yeah, yeah. a business inside a business. 
I know people coming to the water, right? People may need the towel. People mm. may need goggles. People want snacks, right? right? Like, people laugh at me when I be telling them on my webinars, like, bro, you charging people $5 for a 50 cent bag of chips? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> because I'm scared here, right? Right, right. People, I realized people were coming and they were hungry, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I would send my staff out to Costco's, BJ's, anywhere that had the, the bulk selling, and we're about as 42 counts box of chips and mm -hmm. I, I charge them five dollars per drink right? <laughs> right and i did a video the other day because when i went to, i took my daughter to the monster jam and the lord jump off bottles of water we ain't talking about the fiji essential right. we're talking about the, the the name not the name brand drinks right? five dollars wow they wanted seven dollars for a bottle of water i wow. said all right so good i'm i'm, I'm in the clip right, matter of right. fact i need to go <laughs> right, up now right, right. but right. me just realizing understanding and seeing right, i got another opportunity to scale my business so right. now i can make an additional two hundred dollars like that's a, something else i could take and pay off something else or yeah. buy buy another uh, another jet ski or put mm -hmm. that towards another boat it's it's so many different ways that you can scale inside of this business wow. man you just wow. got to be creative with it wow it. wow it. so so let so let, let's 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 rewind real quick man 32 years old multi-millionaire runs plenty of businesses if you could go back and talk to 18 year old shot what um what advice are you giving him at 18 don't don't get caught up in the materialistic stuff. Mm. Um, growing up, because I didn't always have the Jordans and all that, I felt that I needed to go out and take all my money to go and buy all this stuff. I wanted to to, to keep up with everybody around me. Mm. Although I was wise and smart, I was still going to work. Like I I was buying clothes and stuff. So yeah. if, if if I can go back and talk to myself, it would be um, get in earlier, right? Uh, get a, try to get around the right people earlier. I didn't get a mentor until two years ago. Wow. Um, we all need mentors. Facts. Um, and then not trying to keep up with everybody else. Like mm. I had to remind myself of this two years ago. Like yeah. 21, I was traveling everywhere, speaking everywhere, and I had to buy all the drip and all the jewelry and shoes. Mm. And I'm like, bro, I don't rent, you know, 250, 300,000 on, on clothes and Facts. jewelry. So yeah. 20, 22 and 23, I said, I'm not buying any of that. Right. Like, I'm about to go in. I just learned about the, the infinite banking, like, mm -hmm. go and get these insurance policies and run. Yeah. Like, being vulnerable again, I got three and a half million dollars tied up right now, frozen mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. seven months now wow. with Chase Bank. So now, when I get that bread out, I'm gonna go and throw that into insurance policies and wow. I can just borrow from it. Like, that's that's what wow. that's what I would tell myself. Like, get right. get it, get your head in them books. Right. Like, I ain't start reading until I was in my late 20s. Right. Like, get your head in the books because, you know, quite as kept in the Keep it 100. The white people are putting information in the books because they know us as black people. We're not going to go and read it. Mm, right? Mm. So I would just dial in a little earlier. That's yeah, it. Yeah. What would you say is the most extravagant thing you've done with money so far? Buy all my Rolls Royces. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I splurged on it, but also, again, I how many you got? Three. Wow. I learned how to take a a, a, a a liability and turn it to an asset. Yeah. Right? So I've started the rental business up in mm. D.C. again. The only exotic car rental in DC, mm -hmm. uh, but one just got stolen uh, two weeks ago. But it's oh. all good. The insurance is gonna pay. They, they gonna pay out well. Yeah. They gonna give us an extra 30, 40 k. But now I think this again lifestyle, yeah. trying to keep up. Let me just go get what I want. Yeah, because yeah. I can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what what would you what would you say is the most uh, impactful thing you've done with money so far? Of course, giving back to the community. Yeah. Every year, uh, we 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 doing book bag drives. Yeah. Uh, we're feeding the homeless. We're giving out turkeys. Uh, another thing that I started two years ago was uh, giving out scholarship. Hmm. Cause you do have. I mean, I'm not a huge advocate of college, but those who want to go into a special to a doctor or uh, an attorney or something like that, uh, we get scholarships back yeah. to the community. Uh, because again, I understand the importance of. Uh, coming from the projects and wanting more, but just don't know. Like, I ain't have nobody to look up to. It right. was this God just led me here, but not everyone has my mindset. Not everyone has my strength. Yeah, A lot of people, they fall victim to the streets because they're not strong enough to, to, to bet on themselves. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that, of course, giving back to the community. Yeah, yeah, and no, I love that. Like, you, you definitely, like, you need a book ASAP. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause you, I, you put me on. Yeah, I yeah, told yeah. Because I, because I'm like, man, like you. It's parts of the story that I'm like, yo, this is this is this is a this is a book. This is a motion picture. Yeah. It's a movie. We got we. You know what I'm saying? I go give I go give the source of behind I'm, the scenes. I'm doing, a, I'm doing a documentary right now. Yo, like, like, I've been, yo, yo, I'll write it for you, B. Yeah. Just give me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I ain't gonna, gonna really write it, but you know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm gonna let you check it out. Yeah. Me and my mother. I actually in. 
again, during this documentary, my mother was drunk. We wow. was going into the different hoods. Like I remember, I remember times my mother. I, I was three, four years old. My mother mm-hmm. leave me on the corner. Wow. Like this one instance, and, and it, it, I just had a flashback because the other day I had to, I had to teach my daughter the importance of knowing your surroundings, right? Yeah. Um, but I remember when I was three, four years old, she left me at the bus stop with some dude, wow. and the police just happened to drive past, and they stopped, and the, uh, the the dude gave me to the police. I was able at that young age to, you know, tell him how to get back to my house. She wow. wasn't there. Wow. Um. So the, I t- I led them to my aunt's house. You know, it's I can go on and man. on and on, man. But I'm just like, if anybody has that struggle, man, I yeah. promise you, just stay prayed up and keep going. Like, don't let that bring you down. Like yeah. my my mentor told me yesterday. He said you got that three and a half million tied up because you so kind hearted. You keep like. I was giving my mother and my grandmother five hundred dollars every week yeah. as an allowance. She said, "You blocking what God is trying to do." Mm. I said, "Hold on, run that back right mm. quick." He said, "The reason why God get, froze your money up is because He had to slow you down because you're moving at a fast pace. You mm. forgot about Him, which I'm not even gonna lie. I stopped praying and all that because right. the bread coming out, I'm living life. But He right. said, He's not trying to really work on you, but He's trying to work on the people that you're trying to help. Mm. He said, so He had to stop you so that you that you can stop helping them wow. so that He can work on them." Wow. I said, damn, that that's was deep. deep. Yeah, yeah, that's deep. That was deep. That's deep. So I understand yeah. the assignment. And 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 I and I um been at that actually just took me to a different place because um the question I was gonna ask really is advice, right? Like you said, you said kind of like stay prayed up, but I feel like, you know, there's a lot like 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 what you just stated, right? Like there's a lot of people going through stuff, you know, and while they're going through stuff, um, like, what, what is that thing that keeps you going, though, like, you know what I'm saying, like, at a high level, though, so it's not even like, it's not even like you're doing it at a, like, you're doing it at such a high level that, and your energy is so good, though, yeah. you get what I'm saying, so, like, a lot of times, like, when, when somebody's going through something, uh, you know it by the, by their energy, Right, even if they try to pretend like you you know about an energy, but your energy's so good that like it threw me like like it really threw me yeah. off. I'm that about you to was th- still I'm going through it. I'm you know about to saying? throw you even more, bro. Yeah. If I can be a hundred with you, I was about to kill myself a, a couple months ago. Wow. When my bread got shut down, it was like here it is. I'm I'm waking up. I don't have to check the the bank account, but here you talking wow. multi millions to now. You back into six figures because they don't took your bread. Like, right. and I sleep with my guns next to my bed. My bed. I got like, I, I still got my little PTSD. Right. I sleep with like four or five guns next to my bed. Yeah. And it would be d- days that I look at that gun and, and something in my head would say, "Pick it up and shoot yourself." Wow. Have you Have you gone to therapy though? No. Nah. No. I don't need it because okay. I'm 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 prayed up. Yeah. Right. But I was I was this in that 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 dark zone. I was. Yeah. Bro, we forgot the most important. Like, I almost died two years ago. Wow. Damn, like, I forgot all about, like, wow, wow, two wow. years ago, I couldn't even walk. Word. Right? But where my strength comes from is my daughter. But what happened? I, I, like, what? So, so I, was, I was leaving the marina for checking on my yacht, and um, my daughter and I, we riding back. I'm doing, like, 70, because at this time, I'm driving on the water. I mean, I'm on the water, so yeah. I'm trying to rush back to change. I'm doing, like, 70 on the highway, and a um, dump truck had clipped me off the road wow. and when I got clipped off the road it was a parked dump truck right in front of me so I'm gonna show you pictures after, after we, we done but my whole front end was then was in that's why I got this scar right here bro wow. my head hit the sternum wheel and bent the sternum wheel in half and I broke my whole femur like all of this was gone bro so I was in the bed like I was confined to the bed for an entire year I couldn't wow. walk or nothing like I I really so like I really connect with the people when when people like yo like I'm just I'm down bad like that yeah. two years ago I was in my bed not able to walk I'm just popping pills and I just went into that dark zone like Man. yeah I was about to do myself in two years ago and about three four months ago because it was like shit everything that's been taken away from me right. like I'm, I'm working so hard but right. I always think about, about, about my daughter it's yeah. like if I do that, I'm a, I'm a sucker for going out like that. Right. But most importantly, if I leave my daughter, I'm all she got. Right. She don't talk to her right. mother, her grandmother, right, right. my mother and them. They they off on their own little world. So if if I do myself in, she's really by herself. Wow. Yeah. So it's my daughter that keep me going. Well, I'm not not just my daughter, my children. Yeah. Wow. 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 
Man, we gonna need a part two because nah, that's like, a yo, fact, bro. Yo, <laughs> that's Lord, a fact. I got yo, I got so many <laughs> like I I got so many places that I want to go, um, and there's so much that I that that I want to unpack though. You know what I'm saying? Because and and I guess I'll leave this to you as a to be continue. Like, what is the message though? Like, what is God? What is God trying to tell you, right? Like, 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 I, I love, I love that your mentor. Fast shout to my, fast shout to the bro. Uh, I love that your mentor told you that you know. Hey, we gotta say his name, man. Shout out to yo. Derek fast Harper, shout man. to Derek Harper, the the legend. Yes, sir. Right, the legend, the people, the person that people out here <laughs> stealing from. That that the grandfather of a lot of this stuff. That if 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 he didn't exist. A lot of the the you know your your favorite favorite your favorite rappers favorite rappers wouldn't exist and yeah. I, I like like I, I've known Derek for a while I've seen uh, people steal his material and his you know what he has done he's one of the most um, humble legends I know um, for sure for sure he's one of the smartest guys I know uh, so salute to D Hart man yeah, he he the one who stopped me. Yeah. Like right. He he gave me my name too. He yeah. gave me the BOGO, yeah. but he didn't want to stop. I called him like And, and he like, had bro. a similar cause he was on the yeah. show too. Yeah. And he had a similar bout with, with potential, you know, yep. with, with with suicide, you know. I hit him with, up, yeah. bro, and he was like, Yo, fly out here. Yeah. He said, I don't care what what what, what day this this come out here. Yeah. And I, I remember it was a Thursday a couple months ago. Yeah. I came out here and matter of fact, one I was just out here doing another another podcast right. and you would never really even have known. But right. I wow. came out here and he spent the entire day with me. Wow. And we did not leave that office until I was like, Bro, you ready to go? I was tired. I was yeah, like, Bro, let's yeah, go. But nah, yeah, he really yeah. sat in the office and just talked to me. It wasn't even about just business. He yeah. was just like And I and, and you know, and then that's what that's where like I'm like, all right. You know, so me and Julian Gordon, you know, we were talking about just having um, like a support system. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we all out here get into the bag, right? Like at high levels. But there's still that realness that we deal with. You know what I'm saying? Especially as, I mean, as men. You know, I'm not saying women don't go through nothing. But I know as a man, like that level of pressure that you go through and then once you go through that pressure you almost have to um navigate this world as if everything is okay though like you don't even have a have a space to be vulnerable for real you know what i'm saying because and this is why i was saying about your energy i'm like yo your energy still feel good like normally when when some people are going through stuff you could kind of feel it in their energy and so it's almost like yo all of these things that you have been going through and currently going through, it, it's almost like, yeah, we got we got to figure out how we could create like a intentional support system that's beyond the yeah. bag. Like it's really about us, you know, communing and talking to each other and really kind of leaning on each other because I feel like, um, and that's why I asked you if you had a therapist because because I I've been like after my mom passed in nineteen was the first time I ever went to a therapist. Um, and it's weird because I don't want to say that I like, I don't want to say I was suicidal, but I did have suicidal thoughts, yeah. right? To the point where my, like I got, you know, guns everywhere too, to the point where my, my wife had to take the guns away. Like I was just, I'm like, yo, why I keep dreaming about killing myself? Like yeah. that, that was, that, that was the constant thing. Like constant, constant, constant. Like I was in a dark place. I was like, yo, why I keep dreaming about dream- killing myself? Why I keep dreaming about that? And I had to like, she was like. You know, she's she like, all right, guns, guns put away. Um, but I, but I, you know, I kind of felt like even in my times of trying to be vulnerable, it was hard to be that though. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're going to have to. No, I just want to, like, before we close out, yeah, I just yeah, want to yeah. tell, you know, all about men, because I think with me growing up because of my mother and me not being able to go and talk to her, I've learned how to just cope by myself. Yeah. Right. Because you can't go cry. You can't go do this. You can't go do that. So you got to take it in and keep it to yourself. But yeah. Um, talk to somebody, man. Yeah. Like this, talk to somebody. Yeah. And you gonna feel good. Like after I talked to D, I still had my little thoughts, but it was yeah. like, I'm stronger than this. Right. I'm better than this, right. man. But to answer your question, I've never had a therapist because I used to deal with a therapist, and mm-hmm. so I'm like, these motherfuckers <laughs> got their own little issues. So that's why. I, but go and get a therapist, yeah. man. I've talked yeah. to people who 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 have therapists yeah. and. I hear nothing but great things, but that's personally why I have yeah, a bad yeah. woman. Yeah. But yeah, we yeah. need a we need a part two, maybe three, man. Yeah, cause. nah, one hundred percent. Like we gotta we gotta unpack some of these things. I think I think that um 
Yeah, I, 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 think, I think honestly wealth in suicide or wealth in therapy, like something along those lines, because I really feel like there's probably more. Bro, that need to be a conference, bro. I agree. We need. I don't see too I many agree. men conferences like that. I agree. Bro. I agree. That that need to happen right there, yeah, bro. Yeah, There's I so agree. many men that just they 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 ha they have no other choice but to be strong because right. they're the leader. They they right. have wives and daughters to where they can't let it out. Yeah, bro. I think we need to put a weekend together to yeah. where the men can come out and just just let that all out, bro. Yeah, and no, I agree. I agree. Um, man, I can't even close the show with energy no more. You know what I'm saying? Um, man. Telling people where they can play, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even. All right, y'all, another awesome episode. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Nah. Um, but this was real, though, and I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like um, this is a conversation that's necessary. Um, you know, I still want people to, you know, spend five days with you. Um, the boat go inside the vault.com. Um, that's where you could spend, you know, five days with Shad, learn about the boat game. Uh, but as you can see from this episode, uh, this is definitely somebody who keep it all the way 100. Like, and so what you see is what you're going to get. Uh, five days, you can ask some questions. You can really um, kind of understand um, the, the game. Uh, he's going to give it to you exactly how it is. Uh, give it to you in a way uh, that you're going to learn and understand, like, this is for everybody. This is for people who are looking for that passive income, uh, looking to, you know, kind of get to the next level. Uh, if somebody wants to follow you, connect with you, where can they find you? Man, all you got to do is follow the kid on Instagram at the boat goat. Not T H E, but D A boat goat. All right, D A boat goat. Follow him. Make sure you go to D A boat goat inside the vault.com. So the boat goat inside the vault.com. Uh, to tap in to the five-day challenge, you will not regret it. It is something that only, listen, you will learn everything you need to learn in order to create another stream of income. Even if you decide not to do it, just really the game and, and learning the strategies of how to create a, a business and then create multiple streams of income. But then also, you know, he has a surprise. He's going to, I'm going to give up the surprise just for y'all because y'all my insiders. He's going to even have somebody who's going to teach you how to do business funding, right? It might be an inside the vault alumni. I don't know, right? But it's going to teach you the, the ins and outs of business funding. So now to get the boat, you might not even need your own money. You could use other people's money to get funding to get the boat and create a system where you don't even have to be there like come on y'all all right my brother yo I love you, you man love you bro 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 bro, bro man like th yo this is a powerful episode um man like i'm tr i'm doing my best honestly to like give y'all energy but it's it's real though this is a real interview that like I literally have goosebumps just thinking about what just transpired here. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate I appreciate you, your existence um, and and just being so real with us and just um, man, like I, I just really feel like you freed a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like I really believe that. Um, I really believe that you just saved a lot of people. You just freed a lot of people. Um, yeah. So I appreciate you, brother. Um, all right, y'all, I'm closing out the vault. You threw me off. I'm closing out the vault, y'all. Make sure uh, you go to InsideTheVaultShow.com. Uh, uh, follow us everywhere at Inside the Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you follow me, I am Ash Cash .com. Uh, Follow me on all social media platforms, I am Ash Cash. Also, join the Abundance community. We got some behind-the-scenes footage questions, everything, uh, you know, so check it out, AbundanceCommunity.org. Join the community because not only uh, are we talking about, you know, you have exclusive content and courses and things of that nature, but we also have built a community as well uh, where you could connect with like-minded people. So make sure you tap in, AbundanceCommunity.org. Uh, that's it, y'all. I'm going to see y'all next time. The greatest money mindset show on the planet, same time, same place, in God's will. All right, y'all. Peace.